Hello everyone and welcome to this review. My thoughts. I don't know what it is, but I finished Returnal. Uh, I didn't end up streaming all of it or even doing like a Let's Play style format for all of it. It's just really not my game for that. It takes me way too long and I focus way too much to even make commentary. So it's not even really worth me Let's Playing it, but I still really enjoyed it enough to actually want to finish it and uh, enough to actually give it my final thoughts or whatever i don't know i think of the videos i only put up i only fought the first boss frikey i think that's how i pronounce it and uh i got stuck on crimson waste for a long time trying to kill this boss but eventually i got him uh i will say for me he's the toughest boss somehow with most or all the other bosses i defeated them first try either very closely or just very lucky but with him, it was a real bitch. Also, I did stream two parts, but I only edited Something. one of those parts. So the footage you're seeing right now is from the other stream. I will say, this is probably one of the coolest bosses, and I think the easiest. I heard people having trouble with this boss. I don't know how. You just shoot the red thing and dodge the stuff. I will say, his little alien minion things, those are pretty cool. It's annoying they shoot at you, but they're so easy to dodge. I think I killed this boss immediately after uh, the last one. And then I remember this. The old bait and switch. No, it's this is actual one cutscene, or one of the few cutscenes. I'll let this play out. You were how I escape. And then boom, you're back in the world. Somehow you lived 60 something years, but you're instantly back in another, in another biome. Really fucked with you there. And then the next boss in Echoing Ruins, I think it's called. Uh, you got Davy Jones here playing the piano like a madman. He was probably the second hardest, hardest boss for me. He threw a lot of stuff at me and I mostly got hit by it. I think at the end of this fight I had like no health, or like barely any. 
I will say that, I wish we got to see more of this guy's face. He's usually just his back. All these boss designs are pretty cool, but I'd rather see them head on instead of their back to me. And then the next place, Fractured Waste, I think it's called. Yeah, the snowy region. This region is the absolute worst. I think it's the hardest. Mostly because there is no boss, but it's just a lot of hard, hard challenge rooms. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know why I threw this in here, but this really, this funny glitch happened where I died while falling, but I had an astronaut so I can revive, but I revived under the death zone of the map. Really sucked because I was pretty far in it too. I had a lot of good stuff. My health is pretty good. Yeah, really. You could definitely tell I'm glitched out. And I try coming back up and I hit the death zone. <laughs> Alright, so let's just try again and die. What a shame. I think these are the hardest zones because of these severed. There are like mini bosses in this level. Two of them you have to fight aren't that bad because there's only one in each. But in the cha final challenge room, it sucks because mul multiple just come out at once. I think I got kind of lucky with this spawn because mostly these beasts and like one or two sever it at the most for each wave. It was kind of easier. Usually I had to fight four at once. But instead it was just these flying turret robots, one or two severed, and then the giant uh, ball thing. Then you get all the keys, you get a new attachment, so now you can go underwater. Really weird they don't have the boss fight in this level. They just made it a big severed. Maybe you could have taken the leg things from him. Anyway, I think this is probably the next hardest place, just because these enemies throw everything they got at you. This giant thing just non-stop throws the blue balls and then the blue little sphere things. Or not the sphere things, like the dots. And these spheres, they just non-stop pepper you with the laser grid thing. And then also the last boss. Uh, I think he's probably the coolest designing we one. Most creepy-ish. Look at that face. And also, thankfully, I killed this boss first try. Luckily, because I had this hollow seeker that just had laser lights that just shoot for me. Great what attachments I had. I had two of them. I think portal beam and portal turret. I think they're called. Also, with this boss, I like how it actually changes forms in between each uh, wave or health status thing. First you got that severed skull, then you got a human skull. Then you got the astronaut. Then he dies. Apparently there's a face inside there. I just realized that. And uh, even farther, farther, farther down below, there's a car. Then even a bit farther on, there's even yet another weirder thing. And you see one of the endings.
see the white shadow? And while I really hoped that was the true ending, it's not, it's only in the Act 2. For Act 3, you have to make sure you do all the house segments, all of which are pretty creepy because the astronaut is somewhere always around. And you also have to collect the sun face fragments, one in each biome, which uh, randomly spawn. But I think, in most cases, they do spawn, like all the time, you just have to check everywhere. Because most of the time, I found them first try. The only one I had trouble with was the, uh, the last one, Abyss, Abyssal Scar. When you were so much less. I think that was just hard to find because after a certain point you couldn't go back and check. You couldn't fast travel around that map. And also make sure you do all the house segments because I didn't do that last one before I started looking around for any of the fragments. Did not know there was another scene. And after that scene, they start spawning, so make sure you do that first. And then you get the car keys, and then you gotta go kill the boss again. Oh, fine. Go back down to the car, and you get the true secret ending.
And that is officially the end of the game. And uh, really the only reason I wanted to do a video like this, since I didn't really record me playing it, I uh, wanted to rank it. You know, I like ranking games, I've ranked a lot of them, and uh, I wanted this to be somewhere on the list. So if you don't know, I like to rank games based on 10 points of 5 categories consisting of 2 points each. Those categories are design, gameplay, story, work the money, and funness. Starting off at design, I think this game is beautiful. Typically when you hear roguelike, you think like, oh it's like 2D, uh, animation, cartoon looking thing. Like Hades or Dead Cells. This is like a full on AAA looking game. Really good graphics, really good animations, designs. All the levels, all the weapons, all the models, they're all cool. I like how after playing this game for a long time, trying to platinum it, I can easily recognize all the levels inside the biomes. Uh, yeah, design, I'm going to give it too. I really enjoyed it. Thought it looked amazing. Uh, next up, the gameplay. Thank God this game was a shooter. Typically, I don't like uh, roguelikes. I don't know why, but I never got into Dead Cells. I played it for a little bit, but I never could get into it, mostly probably because of the gameplay. Or maybe just because it's a, uh, maybe just because it's a roguelike, I'm not sure. But the fact that this was a third-person shooter really pres pushed me through it. I really enjoyed the variety of weapons you can have, from the pistol to a rifle to a rocket launcher to a electric bolt shooter thing. To one that just shoots acid. They got very weird with it. And also, each one has their own perks. Whether it be burst fire or portal turrets or like leeching life. Also, something I thought that was really going to be annoying was stuff like parasites and malignancy. The give and take of stuff. I thought it'd be like, oh, I'll never get this or I'll never want that. But actually, like, no, no, that's actually useful. Oh, I have to do one extra kill for adrenaline? Whatever, I'll take that for... 10% more protection or whatever it is. It's all pretty cool. Gameplay, I'll give it a two. I really liked it. Now the story. So I've played through the game. I've rewatched it while editing this. I've looked up videos online and I still don't get it. The best I can take away is that none of this is real. It's just in the mind of a grieving mother who accidentally or maybe who drove off a bridge and her daughter died in the back seat while she lived. Maybe it's a bit of brain damage, who knows. Yeah, so a lot of people are saying different things about what it could be. About how Celine could be the daughter. I don't know how. A whole lot of weird stuff. But if you're making me confused about the story I just played and even looking it up, I'm even more confused. To me, that's not good. So, uh, yeah, for that, I'll give the story a one. Next up, worth the money. Is it 60 or 70? I don't remember. I think it was 60. Uh, $60 game. The campaign length could depend on however good you are. It could take you 10 hours, it could take you 30 hours. I think it took me 13, 14 hours. And also, if you want the platinum, you have to replay each level again and again. And that's probably, for me, a total of 30 to 40 hours. But also, if you just want to keep replaying it, you could. You can go through each biome very quickly after learning it so much. Just have fun trying to do records or no-hit runs or whatever you're trying to do. You can keep replaying it, and it's still fun. Also, not really any bugs. A couple bugs for me, obviously, when I fell through the floor. Also, pretty early on, I had a thing where... Because of the suit I was wearing, I couldn't pick stuff up. Also, a lot of people are saying they have bugs with the Platinum. They're having trouble getting a Cypher and Crimson Waste where maybe it's on tracking or whatever, I don't know. I think I had that problem, but it worked for me, so... Yeah, it's not really that big of a problem, but it is for us hunters. I'll give it a 2. I think you should buy it if you really like this kind of game. And that brings me to Funness, which... Um, just means how much I enjoyed playing it. And roguelikes, 
are not my game. I don't usually like playing them. This one, I just got through it because I was surprisingly good at it because it was a shooter type. Yeah, while I did have fun, it still reminded me of why, of why I typically don't like roguelikes. Because you just die and you restart with nothing. Really what I tried doing through a lot of it was just opening or unlocking checkpoint kind of things. Or getting equipment I needed to get to the end of the level faster. And just doing that. Bonus, I'll give it one. I did enjoy it for what it was, but also roguelikes just aren't my game. That's just my personal take. And so that means Returnal is an 8 out of 10 for me. Very good. And uh, I think that's going to do it for the video. So thank you all for watching if you made it to this point. Be sure to do it down below, leave a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.